This is an i5-13600K. It's got a lot of cores and is very, very affordable. In this video, we're gonna be checking out what's the editing performance like in Premiere Pro. I mean, we're gonna be testing footages from 4K all the way to 12K and color grades and so on. So let's see how well does it keep up. But for the GPU, we're gonna mix it up a little bit. We're gonna be using the MSI RTX 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte version this is the gaming trio x here this is uh, one of the fastest gpus you can get for a uh, premiere pro from 40 series in fact the encoders are better than 4080 and 4090 in my testing if you haven't seen the video yet go check it out let's go looking for a cheap way to license your windows check out who keys through the links in the video description make sure to use the code tn20 to get a 30 percent off paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done this license is for windows 10 but you can upgrade it to windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So let's talk about the rest of the specs of this PC. First of all, obviously you can see this is an open test bench over here. I'm using the Asus ROG Strix LC2 for the AIO. So it's a 360 millimeter cooler, but I've used the Fantex T30 fans because that's what I'm using on all of the test bench cooling, just to get the best cooling. For RAM, I'm using 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RGB, 5200 mega transfers per second. For SSDs, I'm using Samsung 1 terabyte 980 Pro for the OS drive, and then the same 2 terabyte Samsung 980 Pro for the where the benchmarks and all the programs files assets are on are on the two terabyte version. This is the Asus Z790 Pro Art Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. Now I did have the Z690 as well, but I think that motherboard died on me. It doesn't give full power to the CPUs anymore. <laughs> and then half of the M.2 slots aren't working and it's got more problems. So I think that board has finally died on me. I think I've done over 100 CPU changes on there, ton of hardware changes, different PC builds. I think that's the end of it now. With the Z790 though, no problem, no issues there. But one thing I did realize or recognize when putting this CPU into the Z790 and with the latest BIOS update, which I want to show you straight away, is that they have tuned the voltages down now and it doesn't push the CPU that hot or that much wattage through this anymore. Because when I was testing the 13600K on the Z790i Strix motherboard inside the Fractal Ridge case, then we were seeing like 160 and more what's being pulled there, but it doesn't do that as much anymore. And it's running very, very cool. So if we put this on here, then you can see that the maximum wattage here now is about 153 watts and we're running 70 degrees Celsius. So you can see we were hitting 5.1 gigahertz on the P cores and 3.9 on the E cores. So we start with simple 8-bit photo 0, 60 frames per second. Timeline performance, extremely, extremely smooth. We're gonna press play, zero frames dropped, and as you can see, our Intel iGPU here is playing this back. And look at that, that's like the amazing thing as well, because it's accelerated on the Intel QuickSync, our CPU only pulls 30 watts uh, from the socket. If this was on the software and not on the GPU, then it will be much, much higher. Moving on, 10-bit 420, so now 10 bits. That's still on the iGPU playing this back. Now this is 10 bit 420, 30 frames per second, H.264. Timeline is very, very smooth still, but this will be played back on software, which means on the CPU. See that CPU? NVIDIA GPU is obviously playing back the color grade there. If you don't know how this works, that adjustment layer there is playing back color grade but no problem zero frames dropped this is 25 frames per second here's a 264 10 bit 422 4k from sony a7s 3 camera timeline performance very very good if i'm playing playing it back zero frames dropped completely fine okay scrubbing around very very smooth this second clip is actually all intra clip which is much easier to play back on your system than this one as you can see the compression is different moving on to 60 frames per second 422 10 bit that's been played back on the cpu here now and the cpu can keep up with it no problem at all but now look at that because it's a software accelerated clip which means cpu is playing it back 
the cores are much more active when you pull in 60 watts from the socket. But still very, very smooth timeline playback, like no problem at all. This is H.265, 420, 10-bit and 50 frames per second. Timeline is quite, quite smooth. Let's press play. I think this will be on the NVIDIA GPU now. No, still on the high GPU playing back. That's good about Premiere Pro because it really knows which media engines to use, whether NVIDIA or the iGPU and kind of flick between them too. Very, very smooth. I've got nothing bad to say. Timeline as well. Very, very responsive. Moving on to Canon R5, H.265, 60 frames per second, 10 bit, 422. This is absolutely cracker of a clip. Full resolution, playing back, it instantly starts playing it back and it's got no issues doing that. The decoders here are about 80% used, 90% used, so it's quite a clip to play back for the decoders, but it's completely fine. As you can see, it's very, very smooth. We've got adjustment layer on as well. That will be played back on the NVIDIA GPU, as you can see here. Oh, Thailand is so, so smooth. Look at that. Like, it moves as fast as I can scrub it. It's so buttery smooth. It's absolutely incredible. Look at that. Now, Canon C200 4K. Timeline is very, very smooth here. Okay, two clips, no problem at all pressing play. This is DCIe 4K, by the way, and 60 frames per second, Canon C200, and this is RAW, and it's playing it back like no problem. We are pulling 110 watts from the socket, though. As you can see, it takes quite a lot of CPU power to play this back. CPU is 70, 60, 70% utilized, but it's playing it back, no problem, with color grade adjusted on top as well. Fantastic. Red 4K RAW, red RAW, incredibly, incredibly smooth as buttery smooth as the R5 footage, I'd say. Pressing play. So far, we haven't dropped any of the frames. Fantastic. Now, this is 120 frames per second. So first of all, we're gonna press play here. Wow. Asia 264, 420, 8-bit, 120 frames per second. Okay, now it started dropping frames. Where is it played back here? See, NVIDIA GPU is trying to play this back, but it doesn't do quite a good job. So first, it does play back like zero frames dropped, goes there, but then somehow the decoder can't keep up and then drops it down and then starts dropping lots of frames. So it goes back up, like here we can see the similar type of behavior on the previous section. Interesting, let's put color grade on top and do the same thing. See, one frame dropped, it keeps it there, and then kind of starts dropping down, and now it's dropping frames. Interesting. This is 422 10-bit, 120 frames per second. Let's press play. Whoa, the CPU trying to play this back, but can't quite hack it. It is full resolution 4K though. If you put it to half the resolution, See, half the resolution doesn't drop any frames. This is H.265 now. Let's go back to full resolution. 4 to 0, 10 bit, 120 frames per second. That should go on the NVIDIA decoder. Okay. Intel iGPU is trying to play this back, which is good. Look at that. That is quite impressive. 4 to 0, H.265, 10 bit is played back on the iGPU. And it's actually doing quite a good job. Only 50 frames dropped and it's looking quite smooth at full resolution. So now this is H.265, 422, 10 bit, 120 frames per second. If I press play, let's see what happens. Drops a few frames, keeps dropping frames. But is that on the iGPU? Yeah, look at that. The encoder is absolutely maxed out here. But interestingly, it maxes out and then comes down, but still very, very impressive. Like, this is much, much smoother timeline playback than I got from, like, the Ryzen 7950X on Premiere Pro with, like, the best AMD GPU. Go check it out, which is actually slightly more expensive than even this card here. 
This is red 5k raw. Timeline quite smooth. Let's press play. Look at that. This is better than Ryzen 7950X and uses half of the power. CPU is 100% utilized and we've dropped on 32 frames. I'm quite happy with this actually because it does play it back smoothly. I think it drops frames between the clips. No, this time it doesn't. It takes 125 watts to actually play it back, but I'm impressed. Now this is 6K Red ROM. I'm gonna press play here to see if it plays it back. Look at that. Oh, no way. Wow. I can't believe this. CPU is not even 100% utilized. Zero frames dropped, 6K Red RAW. I mean, our Ryzen 7950X with 16 performance cores running at 5 point whatever gigahertz couldn't do it. Whew, I feel like I'm going through puberty again. <clears throat> and this now with the woman as well. Let's press play here. Can we do it? Yeah, see, the woman is, there's some, some kind of different compression on the codec that it can't actually play that one back. That's a bit harder. 100% utilized. No, it's choppy, choppy, choppy. I'll leave this on the screen as well, just so you can check out the full raw codecs here. So on the right side, this was the Komodo 6K, which we were able to play back. Both of them 20... 4 frames per second, 23.976. Let's try again this PC pass. Komodo 6K footage. Plays back, 0 frames sub full frame. That's absolutely insane. Now B-Raw is super smooth. Very easy to play back. Two B-Raws on top of each other. Pressing play. No problem. GPU memory. Sixty-four percent maximum used. Seven seven point five gigs playing back GPU memory when using this six K footage. Now eight K. Full resolution. Canon R five eight K raw. Canon Raw, press play, CPU 100% pegged, and it's not able to do it. If you put it at half the resolution, it does it quite okay. Doesn't play back like quite fully, but timeline performance is quite nice when screwing through. And on quarter of a resolution, very, very buttery smooth and plays back no problem as well. Red 8K Raw. Let's press play, see what happens. Okay, we are dropping frames and kind of six performance cores aren't quite enough on this. But it's kind of like half playable, so nice to see. Only 48, 50 frames dropped. Yeah, still drops frames, so not ideal. Let's see half the resolution. Yeah, when it's half the resolution, it's no problem. Playing it back on full resolution. 8.1 gigabytes of video memory used. Quite a lot. Okay, and last 12K clip. Look at that. It's about full resolution, press play. Yeah, okay, we're not doing it. No problem, I know that. But if we put it at half the resolution. Seven point six gigabytes used. Still doesn't quite play it back. Quarter of resolution. Press play. Yeah, 
yeah quarter of resolution is fine now looking at the hardware now we can see that our cpu hit a maximum of 71 degrees we pulled 145 watts maximum which was pretty much like the maximum what the cpu will will do not bad temperatures at all but we were running uh 360 millimeter aio so that kind of explains half of it as well the gpu msi rtx 4070 here ti maximum 62.8 degrees very good the maximum gpu power we put pulled was 120 watts but interestingly look it only idles roughly around 7 watts here 7.5 watts the minimum 7.4 which is impressive now some of the amd gpus like i've got the radeon 7900 xdx and xd they idle like pretty much 10 times that so the chiplet i think gpu design and so on is actually much less power efficient here in terms of the memory usage we used maximum of 93.5 percent and 11.481 gigabytes which is quite a lot depending if you're working with 8k footage or perhaps more than 6k then you might need more than you know eight gigabytes but in here we can still see that this wasn't like the bottleneck of the system and this 12 gigabytes is completely fine on the msi system and it's been completely quiet here by the way so if you want like a really good graphics card for editing then this is the pretty good in fact I mean, this might be controversial, but for that $850, $900, it's hard to find a better, faster system for this because we've got now 12 gigabytes of VRAM. If you go with a 3080 Ti, you're going to pay more, then you get 12 gigabytes. But even the 3080, 12 gigabyte one wouldn't be as good as this 4070 Ti, where this kind of makes sense. I know we're not happy with the price. It should be cheaper, but it's still the best what's out there. If you want to build yourself the best bank for book, create a PC, then check out the build guide in the description below. There's a guide for you, for your budget, pick whichever budget you want and configure it to your needs. There's upgrade, downgrades, I explain everything on the video. Check it out down in the description below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time. If you want to see something next time in these types of videos, then let me know which codecs to use and which, you know, camera footage perhaps you would like to see. And if you want to add this to the collection of things then message me on the email in the description below thanks guys for watching bye bye